So what I wanted to talk to you today is about social proof. Social proof is a term that I've only come across quite recently, actually. Um, and it's like a lot of things. When I kind of looked into it, uh, I went, oh, oh, it's that thing that has always been what we've done. Um, you know, I've recently had to do something on design thinking and on critical thinking. Um, design thinking, critical thinking, terms that I were not familiar with, but when I investigated, when I researched them, I went, oh, right. It's just the name for the thing that I've always kind of been doing. And social proof does kind of fall into that bracket, but it's important right now because as businesses, we are, or a lot of us are having to go to digital means to attract customers or maintain relationships or keep our businesses visible. Uh, I'm doing far more of this than I've ever done before. Um, but also our customers and clients, because we're in lockdown, are going to the internet for far more information that because we can't go out and about as much as we, we would normally do. The internet has become a kind of a window on the world and we're buying more things online. We're interacting with people through Zoom meetings, through social networks. And therefore, it is increasingly important for us to engage with that. And social proof is one of the things that will help people make decisions about coming to us as businesses. Um, it's not new. So it's been around for a while. Um, social proof essentially is the old added to the word of mouth stuff. So it's that what people say about you is far more valuable than anything you could ever say about yourself. And, you know, for many years, Marks and Spencer never did any formal advertising because their word of mouth was so good. People trusted them. And then we have this thing called the Internet come along and they saw a profits fall because younger, more energetic, more digitally savvy businesses were getting on this Internet bandwagon and their social proof was outstripping you know, Marks and Spencer. And then they upped their game, got into advertising far more and recovered to an extent. Um, so it's always been around, you know, word of mouth, you know, people telling you it's good, reading reviews, you know, back in the day it was um, for films, you know, it's now Metacritic, but I used to watch before the internet, um, the film, BBC film, film 89, film 90, whatever it was, uh, with Barry Norman and then uh, Jonathan Ross uh, to get my reviews as a form of social proof, someone else saying something positive about something or negative that would influence my purchasing decisions. Now it's just so much easier to access, but also it's very easy to get negative as well as positive. Um, it is important though to put some statistics behind this, which I'm going to do now. I'm just going to look away from the screen. Um, so um, I'll, I'll read some. So 92% of us are more likely to trust non-paid recommendations. So 92% of consumers are likely to trust a review that's come or that's come from something else. So I say a word of mouth thing, a review, a testimonial, a case study, um, all of these kinds of things. Average, on average, customers will uh, read 10 reviews online before making a purchasing decision. So again, that review could be a testimonial, it could be Facebook posts. It doesn't have to be a traditional kind of like four star review, but they will be doing research. And 70% of customers trust recommendations from complete strangers. So again, they will trust other people more than they will ever trust you. You have a vested interest in saying how brilliant you are. Other people don't. So they're going to trust that far more than anything you ever say. 92% of customers trust recommendations from their friends, which is it's critical, particularly when we factor in social networks where people are sharing things, discussing things and saying, oh, have you seen this? Have you seen that to their friends? If I share something on Facebook, my friends are going to trust it more because it comes from me. Some of them know, they trust, they understand, you know, my context. Whereas if you pay for advertising or they just come across one of your posts, they're going to go, well, of course, you're going to say you're great. You want my cash. So this is why social proof is important. And it works because we have some very fundamental needs as a species um, we want to fit in we want to feel that we're part of something bigger we're very tribal animals creatures you know we do like to be together and we can't be at the moment so you know we are looking further afield now to get that sense of fitting in there's also FOMO fear of missing out as well oh god something exciting has happened I've got to be involved in it there is that which uh, we can leverage and why social proof is important and the herd mentality as well the more people like it, the better it must be. So you now we see a lot of people liking something and we are more likely to like it ourselves for good or for ill. So it's about us feeling that we belong and that we're relevant.
So how can we start creating some social proof for our customers so they trust us? Well, there are a number of ways of doing this. You know, it, it's not just passively waiting for people to like your stuff, which is nice. You can do some, um, some more active ways of doing this. There's collaborations, for instance. So you could do a collaboration that could be a, you know, a, an interview or you could be a guest host or a guest blog on someone else's um, business page or whatever it might be because you introduce yourself to their followers, the people who already trust them. And the fact that you're collaborating with someone they already trust, that trust will rub off. So people will perceive you as being someone who is um, credible because you've been recommended by someone they already have a relationship and someone you already trust. And that can be you know, a nice reciprocal thing, you know, that you get introduced to their followers and they get introduced to yours. So collaboration is a way of doing it. And it's very simple to do these days thanks to things like Zoom or writing guest blogs or taking over a social network for a day or whatever it might be. Positive interactions help as well. What we mean by that is that your customers, if they are interacting with you, interact back. Now, if you are following customers on social networks, you know, comment, like, share, raises your awareness and shows that you're interested in more than just separating them from their cash. But also, if they are interacting with you, interact positively back. If they do take the time and effort to leave a comment, just don't go, thank you. Just say, oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate your feedback, blah, de, blah, de, blah. It kind of gets that sense that you're engaged with them. The proof for other people seeing those comments as well is that you're someone who is engaged and interested. Um, advocacy, and, and as far as advocacy is concerned, uh, I'm, I'm going to be talking about likes, comments, and shares as far as this particular piece of advocacy is concerned. Um, one of the things that people will look at, that herd mentality, is numbers. So if your content is getting a large number of likes, comments, shares on social networks, um, people will take you more seriously. So if you've got a thousand likes and someone else has got 10, people are going to trust you more than the other person because a thousand people have endorsed you. That herd mentality, that whole idea that the more we have of something, the, the better it is. So that kind of thing is useful which means you have to create content on your social networks that people want to like comment and share on and do look at some other videos on you know on how to create that kind of content on the channel um so focus on that kind of a thing as well encourage people and you encourage people by you know providing them with stuff that they do like they do comment, they do share. Recommendations are always good as well. You know, I'm encouraging them as much as possible. Sometimes they're spontaneous. Recently, I've been very lucky two times. I've just had people out of the blue, one post a fabulous recommendation on my LinkedIn profile, another who put a lovely message in uh, to me in, in LinkedIn about how much they value the courses I've been on and gave me permission to share that. Now, they were spontaneous and it's nice when that happens, but generally, if we want recommendations, we need to seek them out. So if someone says to you, you know, oh, you've done a fantastic job, say, you know, would you mind you know, tweeting that? Would you mind writing a, a, a review? Would you mind you know, doing a recommendation on LinkedIn or um, popping a post to my Facebook page? You know, seek those things out. Uh, I use a system called Video Ask, which I came across recently, which at the end of courses, when I've run one of my online courses, I can send a link. And it's got a little video of me saying, thank you very much for attending the course. I hope you found it useful. It would be great for me if you could leave a review. And Video Ask allows people to either leave a video review, an audio review, or a text review. So anyone who has any, any course, I will send that link to encourage people to, to respond back to me. Uh, and I've got, some, I've got some good stuff in that. A lot of people will ignore it, but you'll get the ones that come back and it's so good. So don't be afraid to go out there and seek out recommendations. If people go, no, I'm not interested, don't push them. Say, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that because then you might end up having a negative response rather than positive. But another stat here, testimonials on a web page. So if people write testimonials for you uh, can increase sales conversion by 34%. And I'll put a link to where I got all these statistics from. Um, just so you, know, you can check them out for yourself because it's so many more than I included in this particular uh, the blog that I've written, that I'm doing this video based against. Reviews, again, incredibly important. People will look at 10 reviews. So it could be Amazon, it could be eBay, it could be Etsy, Facebook, Google My Business. If you've got a local business or cover a local area, Google My Business is great for attaining reviews, but also um, to help your search engine optimization. So do check that out. 
ask for them as well. If they're not coming in naturally, don't be afraid to say, you know, would you mind just popping a review? You know, and you know, choose the ones you know really liked it, and I think you're great, obviously. Another one, and this is kind of more indirect, is qualifications, certifications, and awards. So if you have a qualification that is relevant to your business, a certification that's relevant, or you have received an award, talk about it. Because these have been given to you by someone else. You know, you have done something, whether it's, you know, being brilliant at what you do and you've won an award, or you've sat down, studied hard, taken an exam and got a qualification. That is someone else endorsing you. So don't be afraid to talk about these kinds of things as well. You don't necessarily want to, the first thing you say, hey, look at all the qualifications I've got, but don't be afraid to use them in materials to, it adds value to the customer and it shows that you're competent. A couple of other things you might be thinking about or you could think about, um, celebrate milestones. People like statistics, again, that herd mentality thing. So I've been in business for five years. People see five years, well, they've been around for a while, they must be really good. I've just got my thousandth Twitter follower. Wow, a thousand people follow this person on Twitter. So celebrate these milestones. You take on a member of staff, you expand your business. All of these things are indications, proof that the business is moving forward, that it is vibrant and it's stuff that can people can build trust with. Um, also, you can give advice and support. Um, I'm going to do another um, little vlog on uh, on purposeful posting uh, but don't be afraid to put posts out there that are purely about informing people that you know saying here's something you might find interesting that's why I'm doing all of these at the moment it raises my profile yes it does but also hopefully is giving people some ideas and some support and if you for free give advice and support people will see you as more credible that you are adding value so they're more likely to trust and engage um, and live streaming 17% of live stream viewers consider live to be more authentic. So if you're feeling brave, and that's basically what I do now, I, I deliver webinars rather than training courses, uh, get out there and have a go. It's very easy to do uh, across most of the networks. But most importantly, be brave and engage. You know, don't be afraid to ask for recommendations. Don't be afraid to, you know, to keep positive interactions with people, to respond to when they're talking to you. I will respond to every single comment I get on any network because it gets that person, oh, that was nice, thank you. It's not just I've, I've accepted a load of com the comments on the post. So go on, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I hope you're well. I hope things are going well. Create that sense of, of community and rapport if you can. Um, but think about your customers as people who you're adding value to, not just people you are sucking money from. You know, ultimately, we all have to make money. We're business people. But if all you're about is making the money, people will lose trust or interest. Whereas if you're adding value and you're supplying people with useful information, they're going to engage with you more. Um, and the great thing about social proof is it's marketing that you don't pay for, but it's absolutely priceless. You know, we've already looked at some of those statistics in terms of you know, trust. Um, you know, 87% of buying decisions will start with online research. So people will be checking you out. The more positive you are, more effective you are online, again, more likely people are to engage with you. So be customer focused, right? Think about the customer first and foremost. Um, if our social media is positive and inclusive and contains comments and likes and shares, we get more trust. If studies and reviews show us in a positive light, we get more trust. If reviews and collaborations show that we are credible, we get more trust and trust gets us sales. This is where the social proof is really important. It's the thing that will probably happen further down the buying process. They'll be doing the research, they'll come across you, they'll look at your products, they'll look at your services, you know, they'll look at how long you've been around, how much you cost, and then they'll start thinking, well, do I actually trust this person enough to take the step further to buy from them? And the social proof, these things that we've been talking about are things that are going to make a difference, are things that are gonna get them to go to you, rather than someone else so i hope that has been useful i just you know it's something i came across and it interested me uh, and i did a load of research and kind of looked at it and thought like i said oh yeah duh, it's stuff we've always been doing thank you very much i hope you found this useful if you have and you're watching on facebook or linkedin 
give it a thumbs up, but a heart is even better and share it with anyone you think might find it useful. If it's on Twitter, just pop it a retweet, that'd be great. And if you're watching on YouTube, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you like for more content like this. But as always, stay well, keep safe. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye for now.